First things first, making sure the risers are all sorted. A's, B's, C's and D's, no tangles or anything like that. Okay, so we'll start with a reverse launch. Once all the lines are untangled, get your hang points. Hang points come together. Okay, you then rotate the hang points 180 degrees to the left. Okay, there's no need to turn the whole risers over on themselves. All you have to do is literally turn the hang points 180 degrees to the left. Like that, you then clip in, make sure your gate is facing inwards. Okay, we haven't got the, the carabiners on the outside like that, twisted. Gate's facing inwards, and it simply pass the hang point through without twisting any further. Okay, so that's the left one. Exactly the same with the right one. Gate facing inwards, clip it in. Okay, from this point, you now do your six point check. Okay, as soon as you clip the wing into the harness, six point check. Two leg straps, one, two. Waist belt, three. Four, making sure the carabine is all closed securely. Five, and six would be your helmet. Next thing, we're going to pick up our brakes. Okay, so start the left hand, left hand on the carabiner, goes down the riser, follows all the way down, pulls off the left brake. Right hand exactly the same, down, follow the riser, pulls off the right brake. You'll notice the left hand is on top of everything, the right hand is underneath. Next stage, we're going to cross the risers up high. Okay, by crossing up high, I mean get the crossover as close to the hang points as we can. Okay. And then your left hand is going to come, it's going to find the A lines, like so. Left hand on the A's, and right hand comes around and finds the D's, like so. Okay, we now have control of the wing. Launch it, pull on the A's, bring it down, pull on the D's. Okay, the launch process will be left foot forward. Okay, I'm not going to do it just now. Left foot forward, and all we have to do is step back, and we release the pressure on the D's. So we're not standing there cocking the left arm like this. Okay, it's more a case of stepping back and releasing pressure on the D's, which puts all the pressure through the A lines. Okay. And that is your reverse launch setup. Okay. When I spoke about crossing the rises up, rises up high, the reason we do that, if you can imagine you've got your brakes in your hands, and you look at the riser like that, and you think, right, okay, A's in left hand, D's in right hand, you'll notice that in front of the risers, all the lines are crossed over and tangled. Okay, it's not been launched. So that's why we say cross over up high, and that A, it clears visually all the lines for you. And B, you'll notice all the lines are free now. A is just running nice and clean all the way down to the leading edge of the wing. that by doing a forward launch we're actually using our own momentum, our own body weight and our own speed to pull the wing up behind us, creating that airflow over the wing. Okay, so first of all, we sort of the lines out, pick up the risers, make sure A's, B's, C's and D's are all clear, no tangles at all. We then put a bit of slack on the lines, like so, up on the floor. Place the direction we're going to take off in. Start either side, doesn't make a difference, I'll start with my right riser. So we go down, pick it up with the left hand by the hang point, like so. Just check the A's are free once again. They're free. It's a case of getting the riser, keeping the left hand, dropping it over the shoulder, not twisting the hand point at all. Okay? So keeping it on top, like so. Okay? Glance down, make sure these speed bar lines are facing forwards. Come down, and once again, gate facing inwards. Put the hang point in and secure the gate closed and just drop them off your shoulder. Okay, and visual check, gate facing inwards, brake line facing forward. Setup is correct. Exactly the same on the opposite side. Then this time pick it up with the right hand, A's are on top, over the shoulder, not switching the hand point at all. Comes around and you clip them into the carabiner. Once again, gate facing inwards, drop them off your shoulder. Visual check, gate facing forward, what facing inward, sorry, brake facing forward. Okay, next step is to pick up the brake lines and get hold of the A's in our hands. Okay, so do that, right hand first, pull off the brake line, get them in the palm of your hand, come round behind everything, and we're going to try and pick up the A just with our thumb. 
Okay, so round behind, scrape the thigh, A, and your thumb, like so. Exactly the same on the left hand side. Break off, round behind everything, find the A on your thumb, like that. Okay, we say just have them on your thumb, you don't want to be there gripping these A lines with your hands because there comes a point where you have to drop these A's. Okay, so by having just resting on your thumb like that, as you're launching it, the wings coming up behind us, get to the top, and you can just pop them off your thumbs. Just pop your thumbs back and you release the A's. Okay, next stage is we have to centralize yourself within the wing. So to do that, get your arms out and just gently walk forward, not so hard that you just start distorting the shape of the wing. Just gentle pressure on the A's and you can find that if there's even pressure, you're in the centre of the wing. If you find it too far over to one side, as you come forward, I'm going to have more tension on my left hand riser here, so I need to step to my left until it's even. Okay, so you always step towards the tension. Once you've got yourself centralised, just glance back, that's the Paramania logo, and you'll be able to see where they're in the middle. From here you then take one step back, and at this point, commit to the launch. Okay, so just be a case of one, two, three, go. Arms straight the whole time. Okay, so on the forward launch, okay, when you're launching it, at the moment we're not using brakes at this point, you just have the A's in your hands, and the brakes in your hands, but the brakes are relevant at this stage. So the arms are straight, we're committing to the launch, we're surging forward, the hands are going to be pulled back, as we're running, the wing rises, our hands rise with it, as the hands get to the top, you drop the A's, okay, you're then going onto the brakes, okay. If the wing goes off to the left hand side, it's important you move with it, apply the opposite brake. Okay, so the wing shifts over to the left, move with it on a diagonal movement, keeping the forward momentum still there, and apply the opposite brake. If the wing goes over to the right hand side, move with it, and apply the left hand brake. Okay, only then when the wing is centralized above our head can we get our hands up and get the forward momentum directly into wind. And so at that point, squeeze the power, get a full power, full power. Okay, so if you just want to ground handle the wing without being clipped in and there's a nice breeze, the method we teach is to have the A's in the left hand, D's in the right, okay, you don't need to be clipped in for this, and this method allows you to manoeuvre the wing around, launch it, check out the lines, make sure it's all good, okay, and obviously in the, in the reverse launch, it's a very good method, simple method to be able to launch it and turn around and take off. So the key to it is to make sure that First of all, you're into wind and you've got a nice wall. There's not a huge amount of wind at the moment, but enough to, to do something. So we have the A's on the left. Very important you get your Maelons in line, i.e. if you launch like that, that left hand side is going to come up first. So you need to get the Maelons boom, directly in line. There you go, the left hand. The D's, which always have the brake line toggles on them in the right hand. Then what we're doing is we're putting left foot forward, okay, and we're going to release the pressure on the D's we're not going to bend our arm, we're just going to lean back and use the body weight to allow the wing to come up. Now as it comes up, if it shifts off the wind line, I'm just going to walk underneath it and I keep pressure in the A's. But then I have to, once it's above my head, I keep pressure in the A's and the D's so it doesn't overshoot me and collapse. So, a bit of breeze, lean back, up the arm, directly above me now. And I can use my top hand to steer it, so, and my bottom hand. I want to go left, so I just pull my top hand left. Okay, I want it to go right, so I pull my top hand right. You can see I've got complete control of the wing. So if I don't like it, I can bring it down a bit. If I want to launch it from there, I can lean back, and it'll come back up again. Yeah? And obviously if I wanted to take off, I would let the go of the A's and D's when the wing is above me like now, turn around, get on the power, and take off. But if there's ever an issue, all I've got to do is just pull my D's down. Boom, lays it back down. So the beauty of this technique is that you don't actually need to let go of anything and start again. Once you've dumped the wing on the ground using the D's, you can just build a nice wall again and then just lean back and do the same thing. So it's, it's 
hassle-free, this method. However, it takes a bit of practice. But it's something you can do when there's a nice 5 to 10 mile an hour breeze. step towards where the tension is and then from there you'll be able to find the centre of the wing. Once you've done that you can take a quick glance behind you, look for the Paramena logo, any any logo that's there, take one step back and here we're ready to launch. Okay, so you have your A's in your hand and you have your brake lines in your hand. So once you go for it, 100% commitment, you run, surge into it and you're going to feel the sensation of being pulled back a bit and your hand's going to rise up to the top so you guide the A's all the way up to the top you then drop the A's, you then apply a little bit of brake to stop the wing overshooting you, and you keep, keep the momentum going forward, hands back up, in this case of keeping the wing into end and getting that speed up. You've got to get that, that wing up to takeoff speed before you can then apply the brakes again to, get in your, to gain your lift. The whole time it's on the power as well. And then what about reverse launch? Yeah, a reverse launch, so you'll be clipped in facing the wing, you have the A's in left hand, these in, these in the right hand, brake toggling on each hand, so you launch it, left foot forward, left hand forward, the launch procedure, it's not so much cocking the left hand, it's, a, it's more, more a procedure of stepping back and releasing the D's, so your left arm is staying straight the whole time, you'll find if you're, if you're standing still and just pulling the left arm like this, you're going to collapse the cells, so the, so the wing will come up, the cells will collapse and it'll stall, it'll just disintegrate in front of you, just collapse like that. So left, left hand forward and you're stepping back. It's more a case of releasing the, pre releasing the pressure on the D's rather than pulling the A's. As you release pressure on the D's, it puts the pressure through the A's and it comes up nicely. And uh, you'll find if it's strong winds, it's going to shoot up fast. So you're gonna, it's going to rush up fast. You're going to have to put pressure on the D's to stop it overshooting again. That's the same principle as pulling the brakes on forward launch. Wind comes up, you're coming up fast, you can drop the A's. D's quicker, but remember to take the momentum out of the wing by applying the uh, applying the pressure on the D's. Uh, once the wing is then stationary above your head, you can drop the A's, you can either spin straight away, or you can control it on the brakes for a second. If the wing goes left, move left, pull the left brake. If the wing goes right, move right, pull the right brake. We can do this actually, if you thought that we could actually. doing is actually pulling down on the trailing edge of the wing. If you look closer, you've actually got this tab here. Okay? On the reflex system you've got the slow, you've got takeoff, and you've got neutral. Okay? So when you're launching the wing, you want it off takeoff setting. Okay? So you can put that on by I'll explain all this just now. So you pull this through Takeoff setting there. Just a bit further. Like that. Once it's over that takeoff setting, that's how you want it to launch the wing. Okay. So why do we use reflex? We use reflex if you're doing long cross countries, for instance. The reflex system makes the wing fly faster. What it does is, if you imagine your, your wing, you've got your trailing edge and your leading edge. By applying reflex, by initiating reflex, what we're doing is releasing all the pressure on the uh, on the trailing edge of the wing. So it actually kicks that trailing edge up. It moves our center of, center of uh, gravity, our hang point, which is traditionally between the B's and the C's. It pushes us right forward to hanging beneath uh, the A's and the B's. Okay, so what we're doing is we're completely loading up that leading edge of the wing. That's the only part which is taking our weight. 
riffs makes that signal stronger, more rigid, so we're more, more capable of just cutting through any turbulence, so thermals, or if you get starts getting bump in the air, you can initiate the reflex and you actually can just cut through the majority of that. Once it's initiated, you're not using the brake lines. Okay, you get what's called wingtip steering or V-tip steering, which you reach up, put in your fingers, and you steer like this. Once uh, with the reflex, so you can't you don't want to be flying low. Okay, so it's a it's a means of getting from A to B faster. reflex, sit there, get to A to B much faster. Okay, so when it actually comes to initiating reflex, if you can imagine this is how the rise is going to be when we're clipped in. So we're going to be clipped in down here, hang point there, and the rise is going to be off, off to your side just like this. So when you come to initiate it, you reach up, you put the brake toggles on the magnets, you've still got the throttle in the right hand, both, both toggles go on the magnets, you then find these pulley systems here. Okay, so you can imagine all the load is being taken through the hang point. So you reach up, grab it with your left hand, and just pull this cord here, and you see that strap being released. Okay, pull it all the way up, and that's fully reflexed. Then that, that trailing edge of the wing is completely kicked up. And then what you'll do is you'll reach up, and you'll grab your wingtip steering. This little concept here. So you pull them out from, it, from its sheath, and then you steer with them to put the. Uh, take reflex back off, slightly different principle what we're doing is we're reaching around and we're grabbing this cord here, so you pull him all the way down back to your either slow or take off settings for when you come back into land and as long as you remember that whatever you do to one side you do to the other okay the reflex doesn't have to be applied both sides at the same time you can do one at a time as long as you realize that as you if you do one before the other, the wing's going to have a tendency to change its course. But uh, as long as you remember this tab here, push it up to initiate it, and this cord here, pull it down to take reflex back up.